So welcome to this Facebook Live where I'm going to be talking about ME-CFS and the inner game of physical activity. So just let me know you can see me and hear me pop a message in the chat and we'll begin. I'm going to share some slides and yeah just do let me know you can see me and hear me. So someone posted in my group does anyone have any suggestions on self-talk? whilst engaging in movement. Uh, so to replace worry statements like, am I doing too much? Finding this to be challenging. So I said I'd share a few thoughts on this topic. So the first thing to say is that anxiety serves a function. It tells us there is a concern. And it might be that concern is real or it might be that there's a distortion. The problem with anxiety is that it can become disordered and we can, as human beings, have the tendency to overthink things. And this can interfere with our ability to function. Now, obviously, if you have ME-CFS, then your ability to function is hindered because of your level of energy. But it's really important that we recognise that we can be operating from a place of fear, place of trust. So our, our thoughts and our responses can be helpful or unhelpful. And I believe that beneath our unhelpful responses, our unhelpful thoughts, is fear. And behind our more helpful responses is, is a sense of trust. Another way of looking at this is that we can be operating from what some people call the lower self where we are in fear a lot or the higher self, that part of us that has the capacity for calm, trust, pragmatism. And what I'd say is the fear, the fear based thinking is a symptom of the operating system that we are functioning from. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But if our operating system isn't helping us, then we need to install a new operating system. Becky's saying hello. Hi, thanks for letting me know you can hear me and see me. Anyone else on the call do just let me know you can see and hear, say hello, say where you are in the world. Now, the topic of installing a new operating system is a big one, and I will cover as much as I can in this session. Uh, but if you want more help, I'll tell you at the end what steps you can take, okay? Um, and I'll share as many strategies, strategies as I can when we do a guided relaxation, which we'll do shortly. But just consider that when we are operating from the lower self, we can feel a sensation in the body or we can be doing some activity might, that might trigger the fear, like doing physical activity. And what we tend to do is we go to our head. We start thinking about our experience. We create a story. We create a meaning. Sometimes clients have said to me, they're saying to themselves, is this going to make me feel worse? Am I going to relapse? Am I ever going to get better? So we create a whole story, which is just putting that our body in a state of fight, flight, freeze. Whereas when we're operating from the higher self, we're here operating from that sense of trust. Now I have just posted a few posts around the topic of listening to your body, which are in my Facebook group. So check those out. I've posted three posts. So if you just do a search on listening to your body, uh, those posts will come up. So if you're not in my group, just do join my group. There should be a link on this page uh, where you can join my group. So let's talk very briefly about the operating system. So the operating system is, if you like, our outlook. And our outlook, the way we see the world and our place in it, influences the way we think about things. It's gonna affect our feelings and emotions, and that's going to have an impact 
on our physical body. And obviously it works the other way around. Our physical body can affect our emotional state, which can affect our mind. Um, but at the moment, we're just going to focus on the top down approach. Now, as I've mentioned already, if we're operating from fear, that is going to affect our mind. That is going to affect the way we think about things. That's going to affect our emotions. That's going to affect our physical body. And if we are operating from a place of trust, then that's going to affect the way we are thinking about activity. It's going to affect our emotions. It's going to have an impact on our physical body. So consider the difference between someone who says to themselves, the world is a scary place, I don't feel safe. That is going to have a cascading impact. And similarly, uh, I remember reading about Bill Gates. Uh, I, I know he's a controversial figure, but you know, he said the world's in my playground and that even before he became rich and famous, that was kind of his operating system. And consider what impact having that kind of outlook had on his experience. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through a guided relaxation where we're going to explore some strategies for shifting our operating system and working on that inner game. So what I'd like you to do is just to make yourself comfortable. Obviously, only close your eyes if it's safe to do so. Don't close your eyes if you're in any situation where doing so would not be safe. So having dealt with the blindingly obvious I just like you to allow yourself to settle comfortably, either sitting in a chair or lying down. And I'd like you to notice how relaxed your body is feeling right now. With zero being not very relaxed. And 10 being extremely relaxed. And if you haven't done so, you can close your eyes as soon as you feel ready. Feel how it feels to have your body supported. Allow your hands to settle in a comfortable position. You may want to uncross your feet. Just make sure you are positioned comfortably. And you can adjust your posture at any time as you allow yourself to enjoy this experience as you are guided through this relaxation. So now bring your attention to your environment. Just having a sense of what you would see if your eyes were open. What objects, colours, shapes you would see. And now bring your awareness to any sounds that you hear. Noticing any sounds that are close by and sounds that are in the distance. And you can allow those sounds that you don't need to pay attention to to wash over you as you allow yourself to listen to the sound of my voice. So I'd like you to take a slow breath in, breathing in slowly and steadily. And as you slowly exhale, just allow 
your mind and body to relax. Again, take another breath in, noticing your chest rising. And as you breathe out slowly, noticing your chest and shoulders fall. Again, breathe in slowly and deeply. Feeling the movement in your belly and as you slowly release your breath, allowing your mind and body to relax. Once more, take in another slow breath. And as you slowly exhale in your own time, allowing your mind, your body, the muscles in your body to soften, relax and let go. And you can continue to breathe normally. And with every breath, allowing yourself to feel more and more relaxed. Just as relaxed as is right for you. And I'd like you to take yourself to a place for you that is really relaxing. It may have been a place that you have been to before, or a place that you can create now in your mind. Just choose a place and I'd like you to imagine you're there right now, seeing what you see in that place. The colours, the shapes, the objects. Become aware of the sounds that you hear in this place. The sounds that come and go. There may be gaps between the sounds. And just notice the position of your body in this place. Feel the physical contact between your body and any surfaces touching your body. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. As you have that sense of the things you see when you are there in this place, that for you is really relaxing and nourishing. Having that sense of the sounds that you hear, and that sense of the physical sensations of your body. I'd like you to just allow your mind to 
consider the ideas I'm about to share and you can decide which of these will serve you best. I'd like you to consider that you have the capacity for calm, for pragmatism, for trust. For compassion towards yourself. for patience and you have access to other useful resourceful states that you can utilize when you need I'd like you to consider that you can use your mind to do rehearsal. So I had a client who needed some help around having a shower. And she realized that she could mentally rehearse having a shower in a really nice, calm, relaxed way. And she did that by first getting her mind and body in a relaxed state, pouring those feelings of relaxation into her body. and then seeing herself on a movie screen, doing everything in a slow, relaxed way. And she found by doing that, that after a while she was approaching having a shower in a beautifully relaxed, calm, Way. And what was interesting is she discovered that that ability to approach things in a calm, relaxed way spilled into other situations where it was useful to approach things in that way. So another thing you can do when you approach any activity is to start really small. I've talked about a client before who started by just opening her front door and looking outside. Every time she went past the front door. And this client, as well as having issues with her energy, she was also hesitant to go out of the house. But she found that by starting small, taking it one step at a time, first opening the door, then stepping onto the mat outside the front door, then just walking to the gate and back. She was training her mind and body. That it was completely okay do these things and when she was ready she walked to the first lamppost and she did that a few times a day 
And when she felt ready, she walked to the second lamppost and the third and the fourth. And I remember when she told me in a session, she'd actually gone out to meet friends and went to watch some comedy went to see her favourite football team and then she sent me a message on Twitter saying that she was in Ireland and that all started with a very small step and another client found that initially when she went shopping there was a little bit of discomfort around walking around the shopping mall and so she would just sit down somewhere pause and just reconnect her mind and body, calming her physiology. And when she was ready, she would just do a bit more. And now this client was doing things like going to a salsa class, yoga, working full time and again it started with just those small steps so there may be some people who have the tendency to become an achiever and So they don't know how to break things down into small steps. It's unfamiliar. But we know from research done by Dr. Nancy Klimas that instead of doing everything in one go, for example, exercising for 20 minutes, she found that if people do blocks of five minutes with breaks in between their body tolerated that well so the next idea I'd like to share is things we can do to get out of our head. So that we can access calm. One way of doing that is to use our senses. We've done this already in this session. But imagine if your eyes were open now, you might just look around your environment and focus on three things that you can see, one at a time. So if I look straight ahead, I can see a kilim which is a Turkish rug that I bought many years ago. And if I look on my shelf, I can see a bowl that was made for me by a man when I worked for a housing trust and he made me that bowl because I encouraged him to do a 
pottery class and it turned out he was really good at pottery and painting his work and he gave me two beautiful pieces and I can see a book a recipe book called Persiana and that book brings back some good memories of having a banquet of dishes made from recipes from that book. Also another way of getting out of our head is to take a mindful approach. To notice that we are generating thoughts or thinking and we can acknowledge that thought. Oh, I notice I'm thinking about X and in my mind I will imagine putting that thought on a cloud and allowing that cloud to float off. If I notice a physical sensation in my body, I can say to myself, ah, I notice I'm thinking about my body. And again, I can just allow that thought to be acknowledged. But I can let it go. And also pay attention to what I'm saying to myself. And if I recognize that what I'm saying to myself isn't helpful, then again I can pop that on a cloud. let it float off and I might choose a trust based response it might be that I say to myself I choose to go at a pace that suits me I choose to allow myself to pause at any time and just allow my mind and body to relax deeply knowing that my mind and body are doing useful healing as I relax and as I continue to do this My body is healing and I am getting stronger every day. And it's completely fine if I just make a 1% improvement in my approach. And as a result of approaching things in this way, over time I trust in my mind and body's healing power. And 
So what I'd like you to do is just allow your unconscious mind to learn whatever you choose to learn from this experience. So you can use it. to move forward, taking positive steps. So I'm going to count to five. And if you want to carry on just relaxing, then feel free to do that. If it feels appropriate to bring yourself back and open your eyes, you can do that. So one, just become aware of your environment. Two, bring your attention to any sounds that you can hear other than the sound of my voice. And three, Bring your awareness to your physical body. And four, you can gently wiggle your fingers and toes. And five, when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. And I'd be interested to know where you took yourself in your mind's eye. So feel free to pop that in the chat. And if you've got any questions, do get in touch. And if you'd like more help, just Again, get in touch and we can explore what help you need and create a tailored approach. But for now, I'll say thanks for watching. Wishing you great health. Bye for now.